Hello and thank you for joining me in the class today. Today we are painting a crashing wave. It's a really nice dramatic scene. I'm really looking forward to it. But it's not a difficult painting. So if you're just getting going with uh, uh, painting, follow along. I'm painting in oils, but you're most welcome to follow along in acrylics as well. The techniques are identical. So let me show you what the photo looks like and then we'll take it from there. So I found this on Pixabay. Is that not just the most dramatic wave? And that's got a beautiful bit of light shining through uh, at the top or the crest of the wave as well. And all the the foam, just you can hear that wave, literally hear that wave. So I'm really looking forward to painting it. So I want to just show you something that was <laughs> quite interesting. We'll go over to the canvas. So this is the the scene I was intending to paint on a 16 by 12 inch canvas, which is roughly 400 by 300 millimeters. And as I was setting up the camera, the one was a little zoomed in and it ended up being like that. And I was like, wow, you know what? That actually looks better than that because here we've got actually quite a bit of no man's land eh? and with this guy you've cutting out that no man's land so all the drama is much bigger and more um, pronounced and more gives just got extra oomph in in that scene over there so yeah we are losing a little bit of this little little bump over here but I'm sure you can paint that it's just uh it's just a few lines by the time we've done all this that there will be uh easy peasy so no worries so if you are a patron um you can go and download the references i have included the tile template which if you have downloaded it before the class obviously it would be now the the zoomed out one i have updated the links or the the documents so you can go and re-download them if you do want to become a patron, you can go and take a look at that. I'll post the link in the in the chat there for you. Alrighty. So our first thing that we need to do with something like this is I think let's just go and plan out this this painting. So if I look at this, we've got some sky that we need to paint. And then here's lots of it's just pure mist but possibly also a bit of a sky color there as well um probably a bit of both eh? so do we need to paint that so we'll start at the back and then we'll work our way forward but what i like to do when i'm painting a wave i would paint the background the the sky and stuff then i'd move back to the front and i'll paint this front water and the reason I do that is when you're here in front, you're looking down at the water. So that's your actual water color. Let me bring up that one's not too bad. Yeah, I think let's go with this one. Look here in between all the foam and stuff. Can you see those dark bits over there? That's the actual watercolor, all these dark bits. And all the lighter bits is either foam or it's the sky that's reflecting off the, off the water. So with ours, we've got the, the watercolor, which is this dark that you see over here. And you've got lots and lots of sky reflecting off it. So I'm going to first paint and mix that, that watercolor. And then I'm going to reflect the, the sky color on it. So we'll start with the dark over here. And now as we come up over here, you can see all these colors becoming lighter and lighter. And the way that works is, let's go back to that photo. And there we can see it quite nicely. Over here, 
you've got a solid deep body of water but as this wave comes up like this then you end up with if you look at that wave from the side it's like this so here you've got a thick body of water and then coming up here to the top that body of water is becoming thinner and thinner and thinner on you so that's why it becomes more and more transparent so as that light shines through there it, it does appear lighter and lighter but then also you get all the little microorganisms and stuff that are inside the water start reflecting um, light back to your eye as well and that's why you get that change in color where it goes from blue to yellows and greens then obviously if it's a if it's a sunset then you'd have some of those sunset colors also shining through the wave that's quite a nice picture this one it'll also make a good painting eh? So like in this case here, it's obviously quite blue-greeny water. So those greens are uh, shining through quite nicely there in that thin out section in the crest of the wave. And then as it breaks down, it, it's churning. And as it churns up, two things are happening. The particles of water themselves, um, because it's being tossed around, where over here... It's just moving and drifting. So you've got um, water's got that surface tension where the motor molecules like to stick to each other, right? So here, they easy for them to stick to each other. But as it comes to over here, where that water is churning and stuff, then that bond between those water molecules breaks. And that's why you get that foam. So that's the one. And then the second one is because of the impurities in the water, they also froth up. So they are here and then as that wave breaks then some of those little impurities remain a foam for a period of time and that's all this that's lying on top of the water over here so there's a whole bunch of different things that we need to paint today in order to make this guy look realistic so there's lots of different little techniques to do so it's going to be quite fun all right so the first thing we're going to do is let's go and mix up that background color and let's get that blocked in and obviously doing a do a little bit of sketch work on the on the canvas to see what are we gonna what goes where and so i think for now let's go to the palette and i'll just sneak that little bit of the photo in there at the bottom because all we need to do now is just see that sky Right, so the colors I'm going to use today is French Ultramarine and Viridian. Those are the two, probably your most important colors as far as the water is concerned. Um, you'll often also use a bit of crimson into the water if it's a more of a, a, a cloudy day where you've got a more of a murky, grayed out um, water then you, you find a bit of crimson into the water works quite well um, touches of cerulean i'm seeing touches of cerulean in that little um, breaking wave piece where it's thinning out I'm seeing touches of that and it is greening up so we'll need to use some cadmium yellow to to um, lighten that up and green it up and that was i don't know if i mentioned that it was cerulean blue and then obviously some titanium white so to get that gray um, I think I'm going to use I'm going to start off with French ultramarine and I feel we can put down plenty of that because there's blue over the whole over the whole painting so let's put say that down there for now and we'll see if that's enough And then I'm going to put a decent dollop of white down there. 
but we'll definitely need quite a bit of white. Then I think I'm also going to sneak in one more color, and that's just some Payne's Gray. If you look at that top left-hand corner, there's a bit of a a bit of a grayness to that, and also in the crashing waves, that the foam areas, I'm seeing a little bit of gray there as well. So I'm going to sneak in just a just a pea size worth of um, of that. Payne's Grey. Yeah, I think let's stick with that for now. Let's see what we need to do to mix up that that uh, sky color. So definitely the, the majority color there is blue. And let's get some white into it. In other words, we first get that tonal value correct. And then from there, we'll work on adjusting the color and getting the color correct. So the first thing I do now is I look and see the color that I've got here on the palette, what's missing? What color is missing? So it's obviously way too blue. So to get a gray, you're going to take your uh, yellow and red. Your th you, you add your three primary colors, gives you a gray. So the shortcut to that is just take some of the Payne's gray. Because your Payne's gray has now already got your three primary colors in it. You can see instantly it knocks back that vibrancy of the color. So Beverly's asking if she doesn't have, if you don't have Viridian, can you use Taylor Green? Absolutely, Taylor Green is very close to a Viridian. The Viridian is just quite an emeraldy color. I think when we get to mixing the the actual water color, I'll, I'll show you how the the Viridian looks before we start mixing it in. Then you can compare. All right, so I'm checking now. The minute I've added something, the first thing I'm checking is my tonal value still correct. No, it's not. I still need to go lighter. So let's get some more white into that. You find it's very difficult to judge a color if your tonal value isn't correct. The minute you get the tonal value, then the true color is more visible. So what I'll also do is, as I'm mixing, I, I put some paint on my knife like this, and I'm holding it up, upright. We can hold it over there like this. I'm holding it upright like this, against my computer screen. And I'm comparing this color with the color on the computer screen. So let's imagine that's my computer screen, and that's the color over there. So I'm holding it over there like this, and I'm looking at this one versus that one. And I'm taking a look to see what what is that color got that mine on my knife doesn't have, and I'm adding that missing color. So I think we're actually awfully close. I'm just gonna adjust the tonal value a little bit more, a little bit lighter. Then that should be that should be good to go on that guy. So that ended up being just French Ultramarine and a little bit of Payne's Grey. So if you don't have Payne's Grey, just add red and yellow into the blue. Okay, so there's the one. Now let's look at the right hand side. Quite a bit lighter, eh? But it's probably going to be more of the same. So let's take less blue we know we need a little bit of black in there as well or paints gray and let's take more white pop that in there no it's still too dark so i'm going to separate that otherwise you end up with a ginormous big pile of paint check it out is the tonal value correct? No, not yet. Add more white. Okay, 
Yeah, that total value seems good. And if I hold it up to the screen, the color seems pretty good as well. So I think I'll stick with those two colors there. Now I'm going to add some painting medium into this. Not too much, just enough to get a nice creamy consistency. So if you are painting along an acrylic, you should be able to be good to go straight out the tube. No need to add any water into yours. I'm going to try and keep it as as thick as possible so that I can paint with it and it will flow nicely onto the canvas without plastering it on. But I don't want it so thin that it just runs off the brush either. Because we have to put other colors on top of these guys. We have to keep it reasonably thick to add enough, to leave us enough room to be able to thin it down further from there. Yeah, that's cool. So the, the painting medium I'm using is the, just an archival oils, Odalus Classic. Any thin, um, watery kind of consistency painting medium will do the trick. All right, so now let's just go and do some sketching so we know what we what we're painting where. So to sketch with, I think I'll just use some of this. All right, so all we're looking for now is just the basic layout. We've got the top of that spray is probably running around here somewhere like this. And then we've got this flat water sort of starts around here. It seems to end in that vicinity over there. And then we've got this curl of the wave, which is probably around there like that. Goes down and comes here some and he meets that that point over there. In that vicinity. Around there. And then we've got this crashing over here. It seems to be tumbling down here like this. And then that comes over there near some more waves over there or more foam running over there. And then the top of this wave seems to be doing, comes down, goes up, comes down and then comes up a little bit more again. Something like that. And then when I've done that, I also like to just add in myself just a few little a few little lines it, it helps me later on when I'm painting then you've got some little direction lines already and by doing this you can also now get a feel for the the tumbling of this wave it's cool that guy over there like that and there is some some greens over there tumbling over can you see the can you visualize that wave there already? Right, I think while well, we got this brush in hand, we may as well just use that to to block this in. It's not the ideal brush because it's a it's a soft full bit. He doesn't like to scrub. So I'll just put some paint down then I think I'll go over to a, a bristle brush. The bristle brushes can handle the the 
the rough scrubbing. So as I work, I'm, I'm checking myself again. Is, is that a good color? Or is he too dark? Is he too light? He's probably a little bit darker, but he's, he's in the ballpark. That's all right. I'm happy with that. In actual fact, I think I'd rather have him a little bit too dark, because that'll give us that extra um, contrast for the, for the foam to stand out. So there's a bit of added drama there. All right, so I'm going to take that down. And it is sort of grayish in this area of here, but I think we'll adjust that color ever so slightly as we go along. Here you've got all this spray and stuff. So again, as before, we can just bring it a little bit further than what we need to. It's easy to paint over that. Yeah, that's great. All right, so I'm not changing color. So all I'm going to do is just take my roll of paper towel and just wipe off the excess that is on the brush. Now you can go over to the lighter version. And he's darkest in this corner over here. So I'll put some down and check it. See if I'm happy. I think I'm happy. It's a, it's a reasonably close color. And that comes all the way down to here. Let's get that all the way to that silhouette over there. So the way I make sure I get all this paint into the weave of the canvas is just to literally scrub. You can see how the bristles are just being smashed into the canvas. And so here where we meet, I'll, I'll sort of just bring them next to each other for now. But I won't let them overlap, just next to each other. Remember at this stage it's all just blocking in. Yeah, I can see these little areas of lighter color, like here, it's almost like white. So I'll, I'll try and just come up to those points and stop. And then you've got other areas like this, which need to go darker. Yeah, I'll just stop there, that's fine. We'll, uh, when we get to here, you'll have some of this color available that you can now fiddle around with. All right, so here, now we can work on this a little bit. I can see here, this is a, the two colors are just softening into each other. Maybe I can zoom in there a little bit. Let's go to there. Can you see these guys are just gently working into each other. So all I'm going to do over there is just use very soft um, marks or a very soft touch. I'm just gently going to just massage those two colors into each other. So I haven't cleaned the brush or anything. It's still got some of this lighter blue on it. You can really start to see a bit of a, a bit of a mistiness over there, right? Eh? Okay, so Charlotte's asking which blue did I use before mixing in the Payne's Grey? I used French Ultramarine. 
Okay, over here. I think let's do the same around here as well. Let's just gently blend these guys into each other. So that'll start getting that misty effect. In areas like this where I've got quite a bit of um, canvas still visible, I am picking up a little bit more of the, the lighter color. Very gentle, just the absolute tips of my brush are touching the canvas at this stage. Up to here and there's that quite a bit of spray happening over there. So I think we'll add that spray. Can you see it's lighter? So we'll add that spray when we're doing this bit over here. That's probably a good time to do that. Right, so now I'm just checking for any um, brush marks and stuff inside like here. Because all that is, it, it looks super smooth. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to even just take a nice soft head brush here. I've got a just a soft uh, full bit brush, any 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 hair brush, and I'm holding it really flat, and I'm just brushing over that. And because this is a soft brush and you're holding it flat, it gets rid of all those little marks, those brush lines that are formed by the bristles, and it just evens that color out. Just like that. Yeah, that's looking good. Over here, it's still fine. We've got lots of work to do there. So he's good to go. Right, so I think that's as much as we need to do for the for the sky. We can already see a bit of movement happening over there already. Eh? So I'm quite happy with that. So now it's back to the palette. And let's go and get some of those beautiful blues and greens mixed up. So give me a minute just to get that view lined up for us. Yeah, I think we can we can go for that, eh? Right, so first things first, I think this bristle brush that we used, we can wash him, because we'll probably use him again now. And then we can take these guys and move them one side for in case we need some a little bit later. But for now, we're finished with them. I'm going to take this, just put him over there. And he can go there. So the colors we're going to mix now are still bluey colors. So we don't need to wash that. If it was maybe yellows and greens we were working with, or reds, then you definitely have to wash that. Otherwise, you end up with some blue in there, in those, those new colors. And that's just going to kill the vibrancy of them. But now we're just sticking with the blues. All right, so let's take a look. We've got our French Ultramarine. Now we need some Viridian. And that's going to give us that base of the... of the wave or actually the watercolor so before we go along i just want to show you what the viridian looks like so i'm going to take some of that and just just spread it out over here look at that beautiful emerald color awesome eh? It's such a beautiful color all right so let's take that oh we'll just take all that i usually do like a 50 50 kind of mix and then i'll adjust it from there your um, your paints are 
they have a thing called chroma and, and that's the strength or the vibrancy of that color so depending on what brand you bought what pigment they've used to make the the actual color of your ultramarine of your viridian or whatever color you're working with is going to if influence that chroma or this the the, the the strength of that paint so that 50 50 ratio that i've got you is just a ballpark it gets you started but after that you have to look at the actual color and see what does it look like is the blue stronger than the green is the green stronger than the blue and then you'd adjust accordingly to to take care of that to balance out that chroma of the stronger color so the way i check it is i'm going to do this just move it to the side and then i'm going to just drag some across there and i look at this little no man's land color over there and i'm looking to see is that the color i'm looking for so in this case we do want it, it it's got to be like a, a a turquoisey green or a turquoisey blue rather so it's still going to be on the blue side um it does still seem to be yeah yeah no, i think i'm happy with that and where i'm seeing it is actually here on this little um where the wave curls over here there i can see that color quite nicely and then also here in the in the shadows of these little ripple waves that's where you can also check the color if this color is also really dark another way of checking yourself is just clean the knife pick up a little bit of white and just work it in there and that shows you also it brings out that the true color that you're working with you see it's got a nice little green tinge to it so that's really awesome so hopefully that's enough paint probably not <laughs> i'm famous for yeah i usually mix too much color but yeah, in the beginning i do tend to mix a little bit too little you have to quickly mix some more but luckily this is a nice easy mix eh? it's just uh viridian and uh ultramarine 50 50. so let's get some more viridian there and some more ultramarine just in case we we need some maybe you can always put it back in the tube if you don't use it all right so next up to get that going lighter I'll take some cerulean blue because you can see that wave is going more and more cerulean and you can see it in this area over here can you see it's got a bit of a, a cerulean look to it and then it is going greener as well so to get something to go a blue to go greener you've got to add some yellow to it hi guys welcome glad you could make it all right so i'm going to take you can, instead of taking some of that because i know i now know we need quite a bit of it for for the canvas i'm gonna just nick 50 50 of this and put it down here so i've essentially now got that over there then i'm going to add some just a little bit of cerulean a little bit of yellow and a bit of white into it and let's see what do we get So what we are now looking for is a difference between this color and the the one next to it you need a distinct not necessarily a color change but a contrast change a change in tonal value so this one is distinctly lighter than that one all right let's go again 50 50 of that this time more cerulean more yellow and more white ok 
Can you see there? Between there and there, there's not much of a difference. But there's a big difference between there and there. Here, they're still looking the same. So that's my cue to add more white. Till I can see a distinct change in, in, in color there. And then I'm happy. Changing color and tonal value. You want, when you're painting and you're putting this color down next to that one, you must be able to see the difference. If you can't, well, then you've just wasted your time, eh? Okay, so 50-50 of that. I know. More cerulean, so it's almost this equal parts, th those three paints there now, and, and this one. And even more white. So the majority color in the mix now is white. Can you see it's also now becoming, as a result, it's becoming greener as well. I think we can add some more white into that. It's, it's, there is a difference, but not a distinct difference. Now there's a distinct difference. See that? Yeah, cool. Then I think we can, there's quite a bit of that. Let's do that. Just add some white, maybe just a touch more yellow into it this time. And now we're trying to get just that last little shiny through part of the wave. Is there a good difference between here and there? I think tonally there is. Let's just get a bit more yellow in that. That yellow gives you sunlight shining through. That's a good change there, right? Eh? Fantastic. Look at that nice range of colors we mixed up there. And it all comes from starting with one base color and then just gradually modifying it. All right, so I'm going to just take, we'll start at the bottom with the, the, the water color itself. So I'm going to take a bit of medium into here. Not too much. Oh, we need just enough medium in here so that the paint flows nicely off the brush without me having to plaster the paint on. But I don't want it so thin, um, especially because we're working your ultramarine and your viridian are both transparent colors. So, if you put them down too thin on the canvas, they'll quickly just shine through and it won't look particularly good. Alright, so let's go to... Let's go to there. I'm just lining it up so we're seeing roughly what's. Yeah. Yeah, that should be it. Alright, so I'm going to take a nice big bristle brush this time. So that we can work nice and quick. Okay, so I'm going to pick some of that up. And I'm going to block in from the bottom upwards. So I do need a good coating to make sure that this is nice and dark. And solid on the canvas. But I... I I've got to try and add as little as possible. So I'm making sure that the, the weave of the canvas is nicely covered, but nothing extra. It's 
especially in this front bit here most of this is going to be covered up this is those just those little bits that are shining through the wave but at this stage you don't know why where's where the waves are if you're working along in acrylics this little bit here you're not thinning it down whatsoever straight out the tube is perfect Alrighty, so now we're going to start forming this wave. So I'm going to start just going over here, bringing this guy gradually curling up. Now what's super important when you're forming a wave is the directions. Because the directions show you the shape of the wave. So here it's just lifting up a little bit and it's curling back if you look on the on the broader photo. Can you see that? So it's just coming up and curling back. But as we go along to here, it's going straighter up, and then from here that wave starts breaking. So we have to start curling these backwards so we're changing our directions and we're changing our colors all at the same time so instead of me having to manually go and add medium into all of these colors what i'm going to do is just take my dropper and just add just one or two drops every now and again at the place where i'm picking up the paint so for now i'm just gonna pick up the paint without cleaning the brush And really concentrating on getting these directions right. And then what I will do is just every now and again, just as I go lighter, every now and again, I'm going to just wipe off the excess that is now on this brush, because otherwise the dark color overtakes the lighter guys. Okay, so I'm going to bring this guy like this. Now I'm going to start curling him back just to suggest. There's a bit of that curling happening over there. Okay, let's go to the next lighter color. Here's a bit of a no man's land over here. And then here it's curling around like this. So initially I'm just getting those colors down there. And then I'll work them into each other. And you can leave it stripy. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be smooth. Okay, there things are becoming a little bit finer or smaller shadings so i'm going to go over just to a smaller brush maybe uh that seems to be like a one inch bristle brush so again if you're painting an acrylic so you shouldn't need to do any thinning down at this point that let's go a bit lighter there You see the directions changing. It's going even lighter. So I think we'll end up with, with even lighter colors in that little um, the see through P area. Oh, 
awesome. Okay, so what we've basically done here now is we've painted ourselves a smooth wave. Let's finish that little piece just with something darker. Because now we, we're back to a, a more of a body of, of water. So it's always going to be darker. But there's quite a bit of light on this area, so we'll leave that like that. Yeah, that's cool. Right, so while I'm chatting, I'm going to wash the brush. So what we've painted there now is a body of water. And that body of water is smooth. There's no waves or ripples and stuff on it. There's lots of textures. I think even, let me just do that. Just bring that in and we don't have to go to the photo. Can you see there's lots of little, that's not smooth. It's not like a, a mirror or anything. You've got... The water is doing this. So we need to get that as well. And the way we do it is just by using little variations in contrast over that. So where there's light, you're going to use a darker. Where there's dark, you're going to use a little bit lighter and so on. And now is when you get to the point where you can start adding more and more medium into your paint to get it thinner, because that now needs to lie on top of this. So initially I'm going to just use a soft brush, any soft brush. What I've got here is my um, soft full bit. You could use a soft flat brush or something like that as well. And I'm going to just, as I need, just add a, a drop or two of medium. Work it into the paint. Just to get it. It doesn't need to be water thin. But it can be reasonably thin. Uh, let's say the consistency of cooking oil. All right, don't worry about here for now. Let's just get the, the movement on the wave. So we'll start out this vicinity. And I'm going to just had extra little lines in here and as I do I'm using a very light touch absolutely light touch in actual fact I'm holding this so light in my hand look there can you see that I'm barely holding it I'm letting the the weight of the brush do all the work for me And now we're going to start getting all this lovely movement in the wave. Instantly, can you see there, you've got movement and, and ripples on the water. So as before, you have to now just keep going with these uh, directions. to get that curl of the wave correct. If you don't get these directions right, then you're not going to get your curl looking good. And, and I would say the most common mistake I find the guys make when doing this curl is you curl it up like this, and then you get to a point and you just go straight. Like it turns into a straight line instead of a continuous curve. That's easily the biggest mistake I see people making. Okay, so I've gone over to the light, next lighter color now. If it's not giving me enough contrast, then, then go a little bit darker. If it's You've always got to see that the difference between the area that you're painting now and, and this new color that you're adding down.
So you'll find that as you go around like this, you're not always going exactly on the curve. It's not a perfectly smooth curve and you're happy with that. The water is rippling up. It's not going up in a in a smooth like uh, what would you call it? A smooth, perfect, so like a sine wave pattern. Yeah, I've gone a little bit lighter now. And as I do this, can you see here, I'm not shy to take a little bit of this color and a little bit of that color and mix them like an in-between color. If I need to do that, that's fine. Whatever color you need to get it to stand out. Getting there, eh? Some strokes are longer, some are shorter. They're all going in the general direction. So if you need to turn your canvas upside down or on its side or whatever to get the directions right, yeah, go for it. Go for it. And I will obviously use my, my photo as a reference. Let's get some more darker guys going over here. Maybe here's a broader ripple running up over there like that. Maybe here's a broader ripple running up over there like that. So if it's broader, it, it casts basically a little shadow. Alright, so I'm not going to wash the brush. And I want to get just a one lighter version as well. So I'll take some white. And we don't need much of it. White, some of this, a little bit more yellow. Make sure there's a good contrast. So can you see it's a quite a bit more sunny version that one now eh? with that extra yellow in it so that's going to be that final little shining through So that shining through just happens here on that little crest where it's at its thinnest. Like that. Then you'll also often find that that little shininess tends to run along here for a little way. Almost like a bit of a reflection happening underneath that wave. Okay, so I'm still sticking to the, the directions. I 
And as you do this, try not to overwork the paint. Putting down little marks and stuff, and I'm leaving it at that. Alright, let's continue adding some more, more texture going down here. So I'm using this brush. What also works quite well is a is a rigger brush. Let me show you that. So I'll take a rigger brush like this. But now when you are working with a rigger brush, you have to thin down your paint a lot. It's got literally got to be thin like an ink. So lots of medium, or if you work in acrylics, lots of water. And I just hold it in the tips of my fingers like this, so that I can hold it as low against the canvas as what I can. And then I'll pull it up like that, and I'll often even just wiggle and squiggle the brush a little bit as I'm going up like this. Not excessively, but... Let's maybe get another little dark area in over here. Maybe there it's just curling up that a little bit more. that one or two nice really darker guys running along over here as well so when you are working with the rigger brush you'll see that the because it's giving you thinner lines you have to go over the same area a, a few times so that it doesn't start looking overly stripy all right now what we've got is we've just essentially painted water what we need to paint now are the reflections that are reflecting off the water so now you're going to go back to your sky color so that was this this guy over here the lighter version and we're going to be working with him. And again, I'm going to start here in front and I'll gradually work my way up the wave. In, in this scene, we're lucky because you've got a distinct separation between there and here. I think here's a bit of a, a, bit of a wave happening lifting that up so there is a distinct separation and a change of direction so you you're okay you could do that and then this but generally it's sort of one continuous thing so i like to start at the front and i just work my way up technically you could work the other way it's just a habit i've got all right so the waves that you see on the water let's go to let's go to there and let's open up maybe this photo over here. I think this one shows it a little bit better. If you look at these waves in front, can you see they... They're doing this. It's not waves that are full-on breaking, but some of them are just 
curling over and breaking as well. So what I find they do is they tend to make it like a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a spiky point. So you've got a wave which crescents over there and it comes back down again. And then it comes back up to meet the next one. And, and so you're going on. So you end up with these little, almost like little upside down birds <laughs> in, in the bird shapes. You know, when you're painting little tiny birds in the sky, you've got that. So that's what you've got. Now you'll notice here in front, they're more pronounced. And as you look further out, perspective starts playing. So two things happen. They get smaller because they're further away from you. And now because you're looking now not down at them anymore, you're looking across them, they tend to flatten out. Can you see how much more flatter they are over here? Less flatter over here. And here, very pronounced shapes. So you've got to take a look. How far out are you looking in your scene? So in our scene, we are looking quite far out. Can you see that? So you're looking mostly across the water so don't go and put in too much um, or, or don't don't make these waves too let's go to there too wavy keep them reasonably flat so now you need to put this paint on top of that paint so work in some more medium into your paint and if you're working with acrylics work in some more water into your paint all right so i'm going to add just little little waves like that so just just little curls and i'll often even just use if I'm, I'm working a little bit closer with larger waves, I'll even just use little X's like this, just overlapping X's. Maybe I can show that on a piece of paper. Let's see. Let's see if I can show that over here. So if it's large waves, I'm even just doing X's like this. And they'll eventually overlap each other and, and look like waves. Can you see that? So when you're doing this, you do have to be patient. It does take time. And I also find that because the... If your bottom paint is still wet, as you're picking up more paint, look what happens. It's starting to mix with your color on the, on the palette. Because your paintbrush picks up a little bit of this underneath color. So what I'll do is I'll take a cloth. So I've always got just spare t-shirting material and stuff. Just t-shirts. So I'll take this and then I'll just wipe off that excess onto this t-shirt material before I pick up new paint. So all that mixed paint ends up here on the on the t-shirt. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to now add less and more or smaller and, and some shorter and some longer little marks like this. So a good way to tell if you've got the, a, a nice size mark is to stand back every now and again, especially here in the beginning, just stand back. And you can tell whether you've got, whether your waves are looking too big or too small. And can you see I'm overlapping them? So 
so if you are painting in acrylics, uh, then ev even with oils, in an ideal world, I, I would let this dry. So if you're painting in acrylics, it's easy. You just quickly zap him with a hairdryer. You can see it does take a while, but not too long. And even once you've done this, you could even leave this overnight and come back and add some more in tomorrow when it's dry again. But now you can see as I'm working over areas, some guys are, are mixing with the color underneath and other places I'm having uh, still neat color so that's automatically giving those little ripples as that ripple goes up he sticks his head out and he catches some sunlight as he flattens out again you uh, you see more of the sky reflecting in it and then also when he comes up and you're seeing the back of that little ripple. Then you're looking through the water. Or here in front, you're also looking down at it. Then you're also looking through the water. And that's giving you the look of the actual water itself. Alrighty, so now we're heading uh, into this piece that's going up. So I'm gradually changing the directions. Right, so here you can now just continue adding until you've got just the right amount of your water shining through. So you'll just continue adding more and more paint. And as you add more paint, obviously you're having less and less of that original watercolor of yours shining through. So I'll complete a little area over here. You see that, if you look at that area over there now. So you've got less and less of the water shining through. So that way you can use that to create little um, brighter and darker areas. You know, maybe maybe there's little areas where there's a, a, a wave running along. So then that wave would now be catching a little bit more sunlight. So you can now use this. To, to show that there's a, a ripple coming along. Just for continuing to add more and more of your sky color down there. Right, so I'm starting to run out of sky color. I better mix some more.
before I completely run out and then you can't uh, then you can't color match it because it's gone As I do, I'll be proactive and work a bit of medium in there. Because everything we're doing now is going to be over previous paint. Some of that, that side, maybe we need a bit of a dark one later. Yeah, that should be close enough. Alright, let's continue. So now something happens over here. As we're going up, you're now not really looking across those um, ripples and things anymore. Now you're starting to look sort of at them a little bit more flat. So here we're looking at the water like this. Look at my fingers. Now it's moving up. Can you see? We're seeing more of the, the shape of these ripples over here. So now I'm going to gradually start changing the movement that I use to a more of a just wiggles and squiggles and as before this is all still quite very light touch super light touch on the brush I'm almost letting the brush just do its own thing. Over the canvas. Yeah, now can you see I am following the direction all the time of that wave? Eventually, as we get to here, you've got water, the, the water is reflecting as we curve over here. This wave is curling away and away and away and away from the light. So here, I have to now gradually start working the amount of light that's reflecting off this away. So the easiest way of doing that is just to make sure there's less and less paint on your brush. So I'm going to wash this guy and go over to a rigger brush now. So with a rigger brush, very thin paint, watery paint. 
Okay, over here we can see there's lots and lots and lots of uh, lots of sky reflecting there. So again, I'm holding my rigger brush nice and flat. I'm just gently dragging it along here. So here we do have lots and lots of of sunlight. So it's almost covering up most of the most of the water color in that area over there. Just don't go right up to there because we've got some the foam and, and stuff to take care of over there. So now you'll find what happens when you're using the, the rigger brush like this and you're dragging it nice and flat. Because of the weave of the canvas, it gradually starts creating little its own little texture. Let's go to there and you'll be able to see it better. When there's little paint on the brush, the 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 paint just adheres to the, the top little tips of the canvas and you get those little broken areas like that. So that's quite cool. That gives you free free little bits of foam that you didn't have to work for. All right, so let's maybe I'm gonna just turf the um the palette because I'm using the same color over and over. Very light touch with an, with the brush. Super, super light touch. Gradually drag it up. So that here there's lots of paint. As you see that paint starts getting less and less on the brush. Gradually move it up. And that way you're getting that that shading. Just keep adding more over here just to get more of more reflections. And as we were doing before, you can also use just little a few little wiggles and squiggles as you go up here. Don't make them too don't exaggerate them, just light little wiggles and squiggles. All right, so can you see over here on the photo, we've got some foam lying there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the sky color that we've got here and I'm going to just add some more white into it. A tiny touch, because these are a bit of a purpley color, tiny touch of yellow. And I will just turn it into more of a grayish kind of look and the white will lighten it don't make it too bright you see it's not a dramatic difference but it is a bit lighter let's wash the brush Now let's start getting some of that foam onto the water here. So maybe I'll go wide just for a short while. So what happens with the foam is it tends to 
clump together. So now I'm going to make distinct little areas like this. So because the foam clumps together, it clumps together, and then it's also at the same time that foam is busy popping. And then you get little gaps in between those popped foam. So when I put this on, I, I put it in little wiggles and squiggles because they they're, they're also they stick to each other. But in between those little wiggles and squiggles, you've got these little oblong gaps. The more flat on you're looking at those, uh, or the more down at those, um, this pile of uh, foam that you're looking, the more round those little gaps are. Here, we're looking at it quite from the side, so they've got to be like ovals. Let me demonstrate that. If I take this guy over here, and I look straight at him, so here's, here's your foam, and there's the gap in between the foam. He looks round. But the minute I look across him, like we are at that, that wave, can you see what happens? It becomes an oval. The more across you look at it, the you look at it, the more flatter and elongated that oval looks. So as you wiggle and squiggle these um, foam bits in, just make sure you've got those little elongated gaps in between. And then also think of it this way. Here, that foam is just lying there because your, your water is flat. It's maybe just drifting a little like this. Now that wave comes along and it pulls that foam up like this. And as he pulls it up, it's also stretching it. So as those bubbles and things get stretched, they gradually start popping and they also start I suppose you can call them drifting apart or tearing apart. So here you're going to start doing this. Add little dabs and taps. And sometimes little longer squiggles. Where you've got those bits of foam that are separating. So here at the bottom they're more solid. and form more of a mass. But as we go up the wave, as that wave is pulling this foam, it's now gradually ripping those mass of foam apart. you just got these little bits. Alrighty, I think we can lie just a little bit of foam over here as well. So I'm just adding a nice little mass over there because maybe we're now looking across that mass of foam over there. And now we can add some foam over here as well. Maybe there's a little piece over there. Can you see that elongated hole? Let's get a little bit more medium into this paint so that it can lie. lie on top. Now it's lying on the on top of that paint a little bit better. Let's 
Let's see, maybe here's some over here that's now gradually breaking up. I mean, obviously, all over the show, you do now have odd little bits. We can add over here, but I'm not going to do that because we've got all that crashing water happening over there. Let's maybe just add a little bit more over here. So here we're looking really quite across it. So I'm going to add just a very thin and very long elongated bit of foam. But here we're looking more, a little bit more at it. Here we're looking definitely more across it. And these guys are really well elongated over here. There, that's fine. That's plenty of... Yeah, this is still a little bit, uh, you would, you'd need to build it up a little bit more than that. So I think for now, just to soften that, I'm just going to gently rub over it with my brush. And that'll just blend those colors into each other a little bit. I'll add just a few little extra new bright guys over there. Just for highlights again. That's better. No, it's not so busy. Uh, Karen, yes, there will be an encore. All right, so let's let's start working on this lovely crashing bit over here. So I've got the. Soft full bit. There I'm seeing that little bit of. Let's just go to there. And I think we can put that reference photo. Maybe we'll move him down to there for now. We can put the palette back. He's not in the way. But now at least I can get the reference photo a little bit bigger. All right, so there is, can you see there's a little bit of color still inside this wave? Because it is still crashing over. There is still a big body of water over here. So we're going to take just some of this and just work it in here. Now, I'm not working it in solid. I'm not working it in, in any stripey fashion or anything like we did over here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's simply a case of some color coming through this big mass of foam. Even in here, you've got little bits of color of that shining through. 
So I'm adding just a little bit of that into the canvas. There's plenty of canvas shining through in between that. Alrighty, cool. So let's go back to the the bristle brush. This nice big big guy over here. So this is now what is probably about a three quarters of an inch, one and a half centimeters. Here it's quite dark. So we can take some of this sky color. This seems to be pretty much that color. That's tasty. Yeah, seems to be nice and dark. Right, so I'm going to first just lay down this color where I see it. It does go up over here. So this is quite a dark. Well, this foam over here and spray is all in shadow. So putting that down to there. There's a little bit of all this dark shadowy spray running along here, and that's meeting up with his bottom, with the water itself. In other words, there's some spray on, on the edge of the water there. Just like that. So I'm just putting it down. Yeah, I can see we've got already some of this that we put down initially running up along there. So we'll have to lighten those areas up. And where else can we put some of this dark? This dark seems to be roughly in that vicinity there. And it comes down here. Comes down here. Yeah, and that should be fine. Then we'll go out over there. Alrighty, so I'm just taking my paper towel, just wiping off that excess. Now we need a light or a bright, or let's put it the proper way. We need a highlight for our foam. So I'm going to take, let's say just that, that the bit of foam color that we had. I'm going to add some more white to it to make him even lighter. So it's not white, it's off white. But it is nice and light. Can you see that? So we're going to put that down. And I'm just going to use just the corner of the brush. Just that. And initially I'm also not even going to pick up lots of paint. Just little bits. And now to get this foamy effect, maybe let me go to, yeah, I can even just, I can even just go to there. To get this foamy effect, what you're going to do is just Put down the color and same as what we did on the before, just use little circular motions so that those colors gently blend into each other. Pick up as little paint as what you can. And I'm, I'm pressing really lightly so that what happens is these little bristles are doing this on the canvas. So it's not a pressing where they just solid uh, those little bristles because I'm just using the as I move this way they're curling over like that and that's giving me that light soft random foam effect that and the and the circular motion. And sometimes I'll also I'll, I'll circle this way 
and then I'll circle that way. All right, let's go wide again. So now that you know that, now that you know what I'm doing. And often it's just even just a tapping motion on the on the canvas. Everything I'm doing is really light, really, really light. Super light touch. Because the minute you press hard, then you lose all those little spots and dots. Another thing that I've also often done is I've, I'll take the brush and I'll actually smash it down on the let me see if I can show you like this I'll let you smash it down on the palette and that spreads out those hairs let's go to there can you see that by smashing that down those hairs spread out and that also helps to give you those nice little spots and dots see there that that foam gives you So now you're painting individual little bits of foam. Alrighty, so like here, there's l it's quite light. So I'm doing lots of taps and, and circles and dots and stuff. And then it gets just sort of blends into that so as I go out the paint is also becoming less on the brush and you automatically get a bit of a fading so be patient when doing this And you can often get quite quite fine detail like this. I see can you see there I had a big mass, so I used the little circles. Now to break up that mass, you've got some of this is like splashing up. Give me two seconds to adjust the other camera. Let's go to there. In other words, this foam here is in front of that foam over there. And this foam here is hitting the, 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 the sea and it's jumping up. Bouncing back up. So I'm going to just gently tap over it. So now you've got that contrast between the lights against the darks that instantly puts these light guys in front of the dark guys and look at that beautiful movement that you're creating there now pretty cool hey eh? all it took was a few little dabs and taps all right i'm just getting myself another brush because i can see in here it's literally a <laughs> raw canvas I haven't touched that yet, and it needs to be dark. So let's get that in over there, and let's get our overlapping over here as well. Lots of beautiful, beautiful movement. Often pick up new paint. 
The minute you have to press hard, you lose all your detail. Let's get some of that bouncing up here like this. Right, so I'm now just getting a second brush and, and I've smashed him on the table. Again, can you see how those hairs have just spread and split? Because now I'm going to take some of the the shadow foam color and I'm going to tap some of those just bouncing up over here as well. So now you've got some darks in front of the lights. Same over here. So you're using those contrasts to your advantage. As little areas where you can add tons and tons of detail. Alrighty, now we we're heading on the home stretch now, so let's just continue blocking all this in over here. So here I'm just going to blend. Remember we initially put down some green over there. I'm just going to blend some of this grey into that green. And then over here we want just a little bit of foam running along here. So I'm just going to essentially blend that line where they meet away. So it becomes a just a blur. Now you can take some of your foam color. Add a few dabs and dashes there and just blend that so that it meets, it, it merges into that mass over there. So there's just that little bit of, little bit of foam splashing over there as well. All right, let's continue blending over here. So I'm just blending what I've got, if necessary. Adding paint. Just enough to get that canvas covered so that you don't have the weave shining through. Okay, so it's lighter over here. So let's just work in some lighter color over there. That's just the highlight color for the foam. Work it in there like that. And then fade it downwards. Okay, so can you see you've got that gap there now? Where the one stops and the other one starts. So there's your, there's your cue. I've got a contrast. In that contrast, add foam. Foam equals movement. Let's go wide again, so you can see the effect. That's right, so over here. Actually, I think we can add an even darker color. So I'm going to take some of the that sky color there, add a little bit more Payne's gray into it. Maybe even a bit more sky color too. Just to get him darker. So I'm comparing him now with let's do 
that, sorry. So uh, this is what we've been painting our, our shadow with so far. So I've mixed up that just by adding the, the panes gray. Touch your sky color, but I don't think it particularly made a difference. Right, so I'll use the shadow guy, but I'm, I'm going to just get rid of the excess. It's the same shadow brush. Let's check in. That's a bit much, eh? There's too much contrast. We'll work some white back into that. Yet, if you look at it on the palette, it doesn't look so much darker. To show you. Now, sometimes a little bit of contrast can make a big difference. I think what I'm going to do that is now a bit hectic, so I'm going to just quickly wipe him up. You know, normally you could just paint over it. But it's it's quite a thick blob of paint there. Okay, let's try this color. That's better, right? It's, it's, it's shades darker, but not not that dramatic. Alrighty, so let's continue building up these guys here a bit more. I'm using my photo as a reference, but I'm not going to try and get it perfect. It doesn't need to look identical. And let's face it, this is a, a split second in motion. Yeah, may as well add a little bit of this detail in over here as well. Why not? While we edit. And there we can jazz up that contrast there as well. You can see now it does take a bit of patience, but the the end result is well worth it. Yeah, here needs to get the lighter bits. So it's quite solid. So I'm going to use little circles and then tap it out. Same over here, here's some nice bright bits, so just circles, and tap out the edges. Okay, so here we're getting to a place where we actually, it's not just crashing we've got wave and foam interacting with each other so what's happening and this is actually quite interesting is you would expect as this wave crashes forward it's throwing these little water particles forward but that's not what happening that's not what's happening at all What's happening is these little foam particles are being thrown upwards, then they actually get thrown backwards. And we can see it nicely on 
this photo over here. <clears throat> Can you see? As the the wave goes this way, all those little uh, water particles and foam particles are lighter than this big mass of water. So they quickly lose momentum and they get left behind. So it looks like they're going backwards. But they're not going backwards. And it's not the wind blowing them backwards. It's just they lose momentum, they go up and they fall down to the back down to the ground. So as we paint ours, we need to add that effect in as well. So I think let's get our, our photo back in over there like that. So you want to show that, I'm going to call it a going back effect. But we know, no, it's not going back, it's just getting left behind. So we'll start off over here. We've got this lovely bit of foam being tossed up over there. And now I'm going to curl him backwards. And as I curl him backwards here, there's lots, because that's sort of the, the, the body or the mass of that foam. And as this wave moves this way, it gets left behind. So there is less and less and less and less. So you put down the body and then you just gradually push him backwards like that. Can you see it looks like he's just being, fly, being flung backwards. Let's see, maybe up here there's a bit of that's, that's already been flung from here. That's still up in the air. It hasn't fallen down yet. So you can add yourself a little bit of masses of, of those little particles of foam and stuff that haven't quite fallen down yet. In little areas where you feel it's a bit too empty or a little bit too dead, needs a bit of interest. Now you know how to add interest to those, to those little areas. But so it shouldn't take me too much longer to get those guys in, and then we can move on to the to the next step, which is getting all those small little bits of foam here in the front of the wave. The art piece that now is genuinely being flung forward. Okay, so let's just get some dark uh, in over here because what happens is this the foam is casting shadows on itself. So we put that down. Yeah, I think I'll run some of it just a little further on to about there. Because here, yeah, this is foam is quite, it's just running on the top of the wave there. But here, it starts getting flung up. So let's add some of that being flung up over there. Just little random patterns. And as it gets flung up, he's sticking his head out. And he's catching a bit more sun.
Don't forget to constantly pick up new paint. Because it also still mixes as you're working. Yeah, I think that's looking good over there. Right. The last thing I do with the foam is now I'm going to clean my brush. I'm literally going to wash it. Then I'm going to clean off just a tiny patch on the canvas in this vicinity of here. So let's take that light highlight color out the way, push him to one side, take some neat white paint, just put him down there. So now you've got your clean brush and you've got some neat white. Pick it up in the same way and now just look for the brightest bright areas inside this. Just gently tap in some beautiful, beautiful light highlights. Don't overdo it. You've just got little sparkly areas. That are fully reflecting the, the sunlight. And that's not what you're putting in here now. Super light touch. And can you see that sunlight just appearing on the edge of this wave? That's pretty amazing, eh? Let's add a little bit over here still. And then way at the top there, remember we left that little area open. There's some beautiful water just being flung around over there. So add those few drops, work it in. And here and there, there's some drops also around here. Just been catching up a little bit of sunlight. Let's see where else. Here. Here where there's this thick body of, of wave, of, of foam, sorry. It does seem to be quite a bit of light over there too um donald is asking would having a darker background sky help show the spray absolutely absolutely remember when i did this i said you'd actually it's a little bit darker than the photo but I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it there. That's why. It's just free contrast. Alright, so I'm going to take some of the, the shadow uh, foam color. I'm going to just add some of the shadow foam color in this little vicinity here as well. Here where it meets the water.
just to have a bit of extra just a bit of extra juice over there and now I'm going to just take that soft full bit of mine this cast a shadow on that so I'm going to take one of these darker watercolors and just make sure that this area here is a little bit darker Not too much. Just like that. Just a few little dabs and dashes and taps. Just gives a better edging over there. Alrighty, let me adjust the camera just so that I can show you how to do that. And then we should be done. Let's go to there. Okay, let's zoom well in on that photograph. Let's add in some of that lovely spray that's just being flung over the edge. Because remember, this is now not a, a wave yet. This is just water that's curling over. So that water is still, it's, it's starting to be flung up. It's going to end up like that over there or like that over there so we can take some of the our foam colors i always like to start with the shadow and just let some of that ride down over here like this and on the edge always on the edge the edge, that leading edge, there's always stuff being thrown up and flung around. So there's just a little bit over there. Let's get to the light. Not white, just uh, that off-white color. I'm going to write a few dabs and taps on there. Just to get something going there. So there's not nothing now you're gonna to have to go over to a rigger brush and you're literally gonna paint individual little splatters of water and foam and what have you so I'll start with that off-white highlight and we're gonna just tap it over here and I'm gonna gradually kick some of them up So they're not quite going anywhere yet. So most of them are still clinging here to this top edge. Just like that. Most of them are clinging to that top edge still. Riding, they're, they're surfing the wave. And then some of them are starting to be flung up. Just a few barely see them with with because there's not much contrast there right barely see them and then same over here so got some of them still maybe this is even just little bits of foam some of those foam bits are now ending up here at the top of the wave and as they do then they start being flung up and that's the the flung up bits that we've added before and here you're adding the the bits of foam that are still stuck to the wave so the, it's it's that transition area that we're working on now where they're going from just chilling on the top of the wave on the water to being flung up and being uh, tossed in the air 
So this is like an amusement park for uh, for foam. Okay, awesome. Now I'm going to take some neat white, and let's just f add extra highlights here on that leading edge of the wave, that, that crest. And then little bits being flung up. This. So remember, always as they're being flung up, they're going a little bit backwards. So always work in that backward motion. But be careful that you know don't go and create rainbows. <laughs> it's a bit of a a bit of a balancing act, I know. Let's fling some guys up over here. You have to really work hard to, to get them as random as possible. And the, the only way to really do that is to often stand back. All right, so washing that brush. I think we're done with him. What you're going to do now is just add the smallest little bit of... Um, those tiny little droplets. So you're going to take any bristle brush. The, the best one I'm, I'm seeing here is I've got a little little fan brush. But any any brush with hard bristles, you could use something like yeah, something like that as well. Any old bristle brush. Put some medium down in that white. Work it in there. You literally want it thin like water now. And I'm going to just carefully flick just on that little edge over there. This is just, honestly, when you stand back, you don't see this. But this is just for that dude that comes and stands right up here by your by your canvas, your fellow artists, and that's going to make them think you've spent hours and hours f flicking paint at your canvas to get all this fun, but you haven't. And there we go. Alrighty. If I really had to be fussy and just to add a bit more detail to this painting, I'd work a little bit more here on this on this water at front. So I'm going to take my rigger brush. I'm not going to do it too much, but I'll just give you an idea of what needs to be done. Just take your rigger brush and just add just some longer guys. Just in a little bit of a wiggly, squiggly motion. I just feel this, this lit, at the moment there's still too much of the, the watercolour shining through. So I've been working on this area to get it more complete. So I'll just keep working on that. Then you, you can do the same over there. On your own. Just wiggly squiggly motions and also just, you know, that little U-shape that we were doing before. So in other words, can you see there? Just fold it up a little bit more. I think even, you know what, I think even just filling it up just on this one side has done the trick. Because now you've got a bit of variety in the water over there. Okay. 
let me think I'll add just a little patch of foam over here because that foam tends to just stop over there, stop demonstrating it over there. So I'll just add a, a blob of foam floating around here. You'll, you'll find that once you you're confident in painting these techniques and things it's actually quite let's get even just a little bit of foam lying over here so maybe we're looking across it so now those elongated guys that were doing this direction earlier got to lie in this direction As you become confident in doing this, you'll find that it becomes easier and it goes quicker. Yeah, that's fine. You see, now we've got a bit of, just a bit of continuity. There's lots of foam lying over there, right? Eh? So if you did enjoy this lesson, you can head over to my website. There you can go and watch the edited replay of it and you can go and download the reference material and you can access hundreds more of my classes like this. There's oil painting classes, there's acrylic, watercolor, pastel and then there's also pencil drawing classes as well. There we go. I think we can go to the to the final artwork. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Good luck with your painting. I'll see you next time. Hey, those of you guys in the in the live class, if you've got any questions, fire away. I'll hang around for a, for as long as you've still got questions. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I love painting seascapes. I must really paint some more more often. I think what we'll do next, next week we're drawing again, so there we're drawing, um, what are we doing? Oh yes, we're doing, it, it's a, almost a whole landscape this time, but uh, still I want to show you how to draw trees with, uh, not negatively, positively this time. <laughs> Last week we drew them negatively, that was a nice little technique. This week we'll, coming, we'll draw them positively. Um, the next painting class, obviously now in two weeks, we're going to, maybe I think we'll do some more water. Maybe a nice little sunset over the water. That could be fun. I haven't done a sunset for a while either. Well, I'm lying actually. I'm busy with a sunset at the moment. I could maybe show you what it looks like. Hold on. I'm actually busy painting a surfboard that's going to go out in my garden. Let's see if I can take this camera off without giving you a uh, whiplash. There we go. So I'm painting that surfboard over there. So I lie, I have been doing a, a sunset. So you still got to get a, a good old V-dub at the bottom there and a bit of beach. So I'm still working on that. Yeah, great fun. So I think next week we'll do a bit of we'll do a bit of water. Oh, you're welcome, guys. You're most welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed the class. Um, yeah, Veneta, the, the open acrylics, that's what I use as well. I use the Atelier brand, even though I don't really use the open feature. <laughs> but uh, yeah, gives you plenty of time to work, hey?
Uh, let's take a look and see here. So what happens with the, the class now is, oh, I'll just go and cut off that little beginning bit where we were all getting together. Then I'll re-upload the video. So just, uh, if you subscribe to the channel, then I can, then you can hop back in and watch the replay of this. And then obviously if you want to watch the, the full edited uh, replay, you can do that on my website. The link is below there. Um, let me give you the link and you can go and take a look at all my different um, I've got different options on the on the website for becoming a patron. You can go and take a look at those options over there. There's options from five dollars. The price of a cup of coffee to get access to hundreds of my classes. It's a it's an absolute bargain. The price of a tube of paint. You can get access to tons of classes like this. Hey, Camlish, you snuck in. You didn't say hello. <laughs> He's sneaky. Alrighty, guys. I think let's let's call it a day. I'm not seeing any new questions coming in. So yeah, thanks for joining me in the class. I'll see you next time. Have a good, great weekend.